Good morning. morning. We're the Jinx family, and we will be lighting the Advent wreath this morning. We light candles in the darkness to remember God's promise of hope, the promise that healing will come. The promise that oppression will cease. And the promise that peace will reign. Love is what gives meaning to the Advent season. God's love for us and our love for God and one another. Love makes us alive to the spirit of God and the spirit of the season. Because God comes to us in love, we long to share that love with others. We light the fourth candle because God is love and God's love is for all. Hear this promise from John's Gospel. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. God is love, and in him there is no darkness at all. We walk in the light of Christ, loving as he is first loved us, as we light the candle of love, a symbol that God's love is for everyone. Join me in the congressional prayer. Holy God, in Jesus Christ, your love took on flesh and walked among us. Through his teachings, his life, his death, and resurrection, we witness divine love in action. Love that heals and redeems, restores and saves, reconciles and renews. As your disciples, we are called to follow you in the way of love. Grant us courage and faith, Lord, to embody your love for the world to all people, at all times, in all places and circumstances. We pray in the, love, in the name of love incarnate. Amen. brings the love of God's presence into our midst. We sing praises to God for the salvation of Christ brings to us. Because of Christ, the weak are strengthened, the fearful are encouraged, and the unrighteous are redeemed. Love came down when God came down to us. God has come to us in Christ to walk with us in the paths of righteousness. As we continue our preparation for Christmas, may our celebrations renew our faith and fill us with God's love.
of you will join me in uh, prayer, the prayer for the day in unison. God of hope, who brought love into this world, be the love that dwells between us. God of hope, who brought peace into this world, be the peace that dwells between us. God of hope, who brought joy into this world, be the joy that dwells between us. God of hope, be the center of our celebrations and the focus of our lives during this holy season and all our days. In the name of the promised one, amen. And as we enter our time of holy commotion, please share the peace of Christ with your neighbors. Uh, we welcome you for our time of worship here on this fourth Sunday of Advent. I'm Pastor Jay, lead pastor. I'm really glad you're here. Those of us that are here in the centrum and those of you that are joining us online through the live feed, we're just so happy that everyone's here for this time of joyous celebration as we continue our, our journey to Christmas. Those of you that are joining us online, if you've not already downloaded the bulletin, it's at our website at ccumwv.org, where you can download the bulletin and, and all the lyrics to the hymns we're singing and the carols and our liturgies together. Uh, again, this is the, the, the last week, making our way to Christmas, so there are several special services happening this week we want you all to be aware of. Uh, one of those is on Tuesday evening. For many of us, as we journey to Christmas, some years are, are better than others. And for many of us who may have lost loved ones in the past year, this, this year may feel less joyful. And we acknowledge that. And so on Tuesday evening, we have a service which is known as the Blue Christmas Service. It's at 6 p.m. It'll be held in the chapel. We will need to mask for it as we have been here. It will only be in person. We're not live streaming it this year. But again, if the, this year it's not quite been the same, please come as we spend some time in prayer and meditation and just hold on to those feelings. Because God is with us is what we celebrate, and he's with us no matter how we're experiencing the season this year. So if that's where you are, we invite you to come and, and join in that service. And then, of course, on Christmas Eve, we have our two services, our family service at 5, and then our uh, what I often call our midnight mass, our, our 11 o'clock candlelight communion service. We invite you to come and join in those. This year, as last year, we will be having communion at our 11 o'clock service. However, if you'll be joining us online and unable to come, we invite you to come by the church on uh, Wednesday, or Wednesday and Thursday at uh, noon or at 5 p.m. where we'll have a bag which will have the elements and other things for you so that you can join us in that communion moment as we gather on Christmas Eve. So please watch for that. 
Also, again, it's just a joyous time, and we give you thanks for the way you all have supported the various ministries of our church this Christmas season. I'll share more about that in the time before our offering. But now, my sisters and brothers, wherever you are here in the center or wherever you are there at home, let us center ourselves and worship God on this fourth Sunday of Advent. Good morning. I am Pastor John, the Associate Pastor of Family Life, and this is our Moments with Children. So if there's any children of God that want to come up or join us through our live feed or the radio, you are welcome to do so because I have a big present up here that will help us learn about one of the gifts of Christmas. Oh, awesome. Thank you so much for coming and joining me. So one of the things we do is we say good morning. Do you think you can do it pretty loud? Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put that to the test. So on the count of three, I want you to say good morning as loud as you can. Can you help me with that? Okay. What about you all? Okay, you're all scared. You're like, you're like deer in the headlights. Okay, so here we go on the count of three. One, two, three. Good morning. Ah, oh, that sounds so good, especially when you all say it. So we have a holiday coming up and... Six days? What is it? I love it. I just like hearing the name Christmas. And up there, you see our candles? Throughout the entire season of Advent, we've been lighting one each week, and only the white one is left. And we're going to light that on Christmas Eve. But each one of those candles reminds us of a gift that God gives us on Christmas in Jesus. And so I wanted to show you a little bit about the gift we receive this week we remember. So, now this is not something we tear open, but something we lift the lid off of. Will you help me, David? Help me lift it. Okay, so we have three things inside, and I'll show you the first one. Blocks, right? So, I want you to picture this as a wall, okay? If you woke up on Christmas morning, you were racing to get to your Christmas tree and your presents and your family and all, all that love and goodies, and a wall was in your way, said, nope, you can't enter. Nope, no kids allowed. How would you feel? Sad, it's terrible. Walls are meant to keep people out sometimes. And sometimes that can be put in bad places that make people sad. And that's what we remember. Because in the Christmas story, God does something very special. You see, he takes this wall, and he reminds us that everyone is welcome. Will one of you hold this? And will someone over here hold this? Now, in the Christmas story, we have wonderful shepherds that come. Shepherds oftentimes would experience walls. They weren't always invited or welcome, and they'd be sad. And God says, nope, I want you to come to Christmas. And right over there, can you open up our little treasure chest? Oh, gold is inside. And we remember in the story of Christmas, magi came from the east, and they brought gold gifts. They too would have experienced walls that said, you probably can't come inside. People still experience these walls, and it makes God sad. And so we remember this gift of Jesus, that all of these walls are going to keep us from coming together and celebrating Christmas and having an awesome party. God's going to bring them all down. So are you ready for Christmas? Yeah. Are you excited that all the walls are gone and that everyone is invited? Me too. So let's say a thank you prayer to God, and then we're going to go upstairs for anyone that wants to join me into room 208. And we're going to make some special Christmas ornaments and remember and learn a little bit more about the gifts of Christmas. There's another one? Where? Let's go see. Okay, so let's... Dear God, thank you for all our gifts and the biggest gift, your love, your son, Jesus. You want to say a big amen? Amen. Thank you. So we're going to go right upstairs to 208 if you like, and if not, you can rejoin your parents.
As we prepare for our time of prayer, I lay on the altar table the prayer requests those of you in the centrum have written as you, as you came in. If you're joining us online, we of course invite you to share your prayer requests in the comment section on the live feed. All these will be compiled and shared with the congregation early this week so that we can be in prayer for one another for the needs on our hearts and minds. As uh, some of you are aware, one of our uh, you know, parishioners lost her mother this week, uh, Jenny McMillian, and so we remember that family. Uh, also, there were a few that were in the hospital, but their surgeries or procedures all went well. I can't lift their names before you, but we're thankful for that. But now, as we prepare for this time of prayer, let us share our chorus together as I light the prayer candle, and we come before the Lord with the things on our hearts and our minds. among us to renew us to strengthen us as we continue our journey toward the celebration of your breaking into our world coming in the form of that baby long ago we also recognize that you continue to come that you continue to come and be birthed among us in our hearts and lives and in our day and time and for that we give you our thanks we thank you as we remember the young maiden long ago, Mary, and how in her response of saying, let it be, you came into our world. So too do we ask you to let it be in our lives and come into us, in and through us. Oh God, so often this world hits us with things that make us feel that we are unworthy, that we are nobodies, that we are nothing. Yet just as the angel came to Mary declaring her favored, so too does your birth remind us that, that we are favored, that we are loved, and that it is through your grace we can rise to meet any of the challenges we face in our day and time. We pray for those who are facing the challenge of the mystery of death and pray that they would be comforted and strengthened. We pray for any who are facing that struggle of illness and hardship of body, be it COVID-related or other ailments. And we pray for their healing and their strength. We pray for this world, O oh God, that has so many walls, walls that divide us and try to keep us apart. But we recognize that in your coming, all of those walls came down. For you declared that all are welcome 
that everyone is loved and everyone's a part of your plan. So, oh God, we pray that wherever there are walls, wherever there are wars, wherever there is strife, that indeed your love might manifest and all the world would wake up to your love and your power that came in that child, that power that continues to be among us. So bless us this day in our worship, oh God, and in our lives as we recognize your call upon them, as we share this prayer that that one taught us, that little one who was born, that walked and talked and taught us and shared us with us and then gave himself for us, this Jesus the Christ, who invites us to pray, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Hear the gospel lesson from Luke chapter 1 verses 26 through 38. The birth of Jesus foretold. In the sixth month the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary and he came to her and said greetings favored one the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom there shall will be no end. Mary said to the angel, how can this be, since I am a virgin? The, spirit, or the angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will ab- overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called the Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her, who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
I invite you to stand for the reading of our second portion of our gospel lesson. These words come to us from the Gospel of Luke, the first chapter, verses 39 to 55. In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on all the generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation." He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. This is the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. You may be seated. Let us pray. Holy and gracious God, as we continue our journey towards Christmas, as we continue to, to look for your grace and power in our lives, I pray as always that these simple words of my mouth and these meditations of our hearts would be acceptable in your sight. For Lord, you ever and always are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. As we celebrate this fourth and final Sunday of Advent on our journey towards Christmas this year, we have been celebrating the promises of hope, the, the promise of healing to come, the, the promise of oppression to cease and for peace to reign. And now today, we reflect on the promise of love, a love that includes everyone. And we do so by reflecting on this story of Mary. The, the story of Mary is found in the Gospel of Luke. Now, Mary's story, I think, is probably one of, if not the favorite story of the Gospels. The story of this humble maiden from Nazareth has, has become an icon for this, the Advent and Christmas season. The image of her lovingly looking at a, a baby in the manger in the soft light of a star beaming down upon her while she knowingly smiles as a ragtag band of shepherds come bursting onto the scene is an image that has graced uh, Christmas cards and Hallmark movies and all of those things we associate with this time. In many respects, she's become as much a cultural symbol of the season as that more common commercial one of Santa Claus. But her story reminds me of one that's told of a time when, when a man or a pagan came and asked a rabbi a question. He said, why did God speak to Moses through a thorn bush? For you see, this man thought that God should have spoken instead with some type of peal of thunder and great shining power on the top of a mountain. To which the, the rabbi responded, to teach you that there's no place on earth where God's glory is not. Not even a humble thorn bush. And I believe that Mary's story teaches us and her experience shows us that, that God's glory is not just found in thorny bushes, but, but it's in people like Mary and in people like us. You see, Mary was a nobody. She was a young, unmarried teenager living in a small village in, in a backwater country far from the halls of power. 
I mean, her story would never have made it on real wives of Nazareth. She was an unknown poor peasant woman from nowhere who was engaged to a, to a simple man, a, a carpenter or a stonemason. Tectone is the word. We're not sure exactly. He probably worked uh, building things. She may have gone to that big metropolis of Jerusalem once or twice for a, a religious festival. But she never really journeyed far from home to those fancier places like Rome or, or Alexandria. Indeed, she was a, a person who was destined to a life of hardship and toil. You know, often when we remember Mary, the mother of Jesus, I think it's easy for us to jump immediately into the great traditions of the church. The glorious veneration she receives among our Roman Catholic and Eastern Orthodox brethren. And I think sometimes that, that great veneration hides her, her humanity from us. And it causes us to, to see her not as one of us, but, but as a woman that's somehow far removed from this realm of human experience. Yet I'm not sure that's the case. Now don't get me wrong, I do believe Mary was special. A woman who, as her cousin Elizabeth told her, was most blessed among women. Yet at the time we encounter her in our lessons this morning, she appears not as some, some glorified woman in a Renaissance painting but rather as a young, frightened girl. A 14 to 6-year-old young woman, 16-year-old young woman who has this mysterious encounter with an angel. Have you ever thought how you might have reacted if an angel came down to you like Gabriel did to Mary? I have. And when I do, I, I figure that comment, do not afraid, is more than appropriate because it probably would have been directed to my back as I ran out the door. But the thing is, Mary does not run. Rather, we're told that in this encounter, she is perplexed and, and she is confused as this angelic messenger tells her that she has found favor with God and that she has been chosen for this special role in God's plan for the world telling her that she has been chosen to, to bear this one, this, this one named Jesus, to which the bewildered Mary asked the angel, how can this be? How can this be? I believe that Mary's question is surely a question that rests upon many of our hearts. Not just at this time of Christmas when we hear the story of Mary and the story of Joseph and the angels and the shepherds and the virgin birth, but also at other times as well. How can it be that our God came into this world to save us? How can it be that God can come to this church, Christ church, and use it for great things? How can it be that God can come to me? And somehow make a real difference in my life. And then through me, make a difference in others' lives. Of course, we know the answer to Mary's question. The angel said, God is pleased with you and you will have a son. The Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. For nothing is impossible with God. And I, could it be that the answer to our individual versions of Mary's question is not the same? That God somehow is actually pleased with us? That, that God somehow indeed favors us? And that God's power can and will overshadow us? And will conceive in us? And work through us? To do those things that we thought were impossible? You know, the Christmas story is filled with things that seem to be impossible. Things like angels singing in the heavens, strange stars shining in the east, mysterious travelers coming great distances across the desert to worship a baby. And I don't know which of those things you find most impressive in the Christmas story. There, there are so many things to choose from. But for me... I think one of the most impressive parts of the Christmas story takes, right here, takes place right here at the end of this story. When Mary answers Gabriel's announcement 
And she responds to the call of God with those simple words, I will be your servant. I will be your servant. Let it be with me according to your will. What faith. What faith Mary must have had. What incredible trust for a young teenage woman. If I were in her shoes, and in a sense I am, and I would say in a sense so are all of you, I'm not really sure how I would react. Unless I would go back to that other question again and say, how can this be? How can this be that I would find favor in God's sight? How can this be that God would want to do something impossible through me? How can it be that God somehow wants to use me? How can it be that I am that important to God and to God's plan? Mary, though, asks the question, how can this be? But as she does so, she's fully prepared to accept the answer. That nothing is impossible. And that God is actually going to let loose into this world this power of love and grace through her. And that she is going to be the instrument of God's promise of healing and wholeness. A promise of vindication and salvation come true. She lacks all the credentials that we would think would be important for anyone making such a dramatic change in history. Indeed, everything is against her. Her age, her gender, her inexperience, her marital status, her social class, her her powerlessness in this world. But somehow... What Mary has in her favor is what we all have in our favor. The grace and love of God. And so because of that, from the depths of her being, she can respond and and express her amazement and her adoration and worship of love as God as she was singled out. A nobody from Nazareth to accomplish mighty purposes. Yet is this not the character of this God we've been reading about all along? A God who chose Israel from the very beginning, not because they were mighty and powerful, but because they were the least among the peoples of the earth. A God who chose Moses, a child of slaves, to to deliver his people. A God who chose Gideon, who was the least member of the smallest clan, of the smallest tribe in Israel. A God who chose Samuel when he was but a child. A God who chose David, the youngest and the least in his family. And a God who chooses ordinary people. People that seem unlikely and unskilled. We all know our inadequacies. Deep down, many of us often say to ourselves, how can God work through such a person as me? If God only knew what kind of person I was, then God probably would not even speak to me. And while it may be true that most all of us have probably lived lives that are, that are less than what God would hope for at times, the fact is God does not give up simply because we're weak. Indeed, God sees beyond our limitations. God sees beyond those limitations to the wonderful possibilities of what can happen if we but trust him. For you see, Mary was not called to fulfill this birth on our, all on her own. And indeed she couldn't, she can't. Nor can we, for it is God who will be the creative force that's working through Mary. And my friends, just as it was for Mary, so too is it for us. The life of God is conceived and nurtured in us if we are but willing to let it be so. Because it happens through God's power, not our own. Most often we hear the story of Mary in some distant way. A story about something that happened long, long ago in a land far, far away. A story that's a once and for all event about a virgin birth surrounded by shepherds and kings and all that. But in a sense, I believe it's not that kind of a story at all. It's a story about us. It's a story about me. It's a story about you. 
And it's a story about letting the Holy Spirit touch us with this mysterious grace, a grace of Christ that can begin to stir in our bellies. For the promise of hope that we celebrate as we light this candle is that it is for everyone. That's the E in hope. Everyone is a part of God's plan. And that we have been chosen. We have been chosen to receive God's love. Chosen to be bearers of that love. And the choice is ours. The choice is ours to prepare to receive this gift of new life or simply ignore it. There's a movie out at the theaters now. Another one of the Matrix movies. You may remember the first one. I think that's probably the only one I watched. And I don't remember it all. But I do remember there's a point in that movie where the Morpheus character asks Neo to free his mind, to free your mind. And, and I think this story is about that. It's about freeing our mind to hear that promise that we're all included. And they were all a part of it. And when Mary opened her mind and said, let it be so, and heard it, then when she went to Elizabeth, she could proclaim it. That everyone was a part of this. And that the lowly would be lifted up and the haughty brought down and all people would be embraced in this love of God. We live in a world that says you got to earn it all the time. We live in a world that say only the wealthy have it. We live in a world that says none of us are worthy, that we're not perfect. But the message that Mary proclaims says no. That's just an illusion. That's not reality. The reality is that God loves us. He loves us all, everyone. And not only does he love us, he wants us to be a part of this plan. That we have a unique role in that plan. No matter who we are, no matter what we've done. The Beatles used to sing about how Mother Mary comes to us singing words of wisdom. Though they probably were talking about John's mom. I believe Mary comes to us Speaking words of wisdom today. Saying that you're favored. You're loved. And that God wants you to be a part of the plan. That all of us are welcome into that plan. That you are favored, Wayne. That you're favored, Joan and Steve. That you're favored, no matter who you are. No matter how old you are. You're favored, Cora. You're favored and loved. And God wants to do great things in you. And wants to do great things in us this year. And to bless the world through us. Just as he blessed the world through that gift that Mary brought into this world. That babe that showed us. That grace is available for all. For that indeed is the promise of the incarnation. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. Oh God, we give you thanks that you came to a, a young woman long ago in a land far away. And that your spirit bore down upon her and she brought into this world your love and grace in the form of this Jesus. The one whose birth we'll celebrate here in just a few days. But oh God, we also give you thanks that your spirit continues to pour out. That your spirit always pours out. Claiming and naming us all. Everyone claiming us to be favored, to be favored and to be used by you in building that kingdom you envisioned. May we be open to receive that grace this day and always. In Jesus' name, amen. As we prepare for our time of offering, I did want to share briefly with you uh, that we're very thankful for those of you that participated in our various programs of getting gifts for folks in our community. All of those gifts have been purchased and will be distributed, and we lovingly thank you for that generosity. I also, in preparing for our charge conference this week, I may have mentioned it last week, that through your generosity, we have supported people in our community with over $35,000 worth of utility assistance. 
That's huge. And through your generosity and your ongoing generosity, this is the first year in my ministry where I took the check for the apportionment to the conference office, not the 1st of January, (laughs) but last week. Thank you for your generosity. Through your generosity, lives are being changed, lives are being touched. So please continue with your generosity here through the life of Christ Church. Thank you.
And now, you favored ones, those whom God's love rains down upon, may you go forth into this world to give birth to that love to all whom you meet. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.